Thank you, uh, Jesse and Matt. Um, very excited to be here. Um, me and Christian, to my right, um, famous for uports and a lot of other contributions to things that we're building at Consensus and for the Ethereum ecosystem, uh, is working with me on uh, Balance, the smart contract powered triple entry accounting system. Uh, it's mostly a proof of concept, uh, but I think the implications are pretty powerful. So let's uh, dive right in. Oh, yeah, but a little bit of history. Uh, Christian used to be a quant at Bloomberg and has a PhD in algebraic geometry. I used to work at the New York Stock Exchange in a Bitcoin trading firm and do a lot of the uh, evangelism for uh, front end and the web 3.0 ecosystem. And uh, let Christian talk a little bit more specifically about accounting. Thank you, Jeff. So um, there is, okay, so Balance is about triple entry accounting, and in order to understand that, we first have to look at what is double entry accounting. So double entry accounting is a relatively recent phenomenon in accounting. It was invented about 600 years ago. Uh, and <laughs> the idea is you want to minimize the uh, uh, errors on your books. So what you do is that for each transaction, you do two entries in your books. One entry is a, called a debit and one entry is called a credit. So if we see a transaction here where Alice uh, purchases a hamburger from Bob, she's paying 10 ether. And you can see that Alice has an, uh, an addition to her expense account. So this is a debit of 10 ether. She has a, a credit of 10 ether. Uh, for, for her assets. And then Bob, on the other hand, uh, he receives 10 Ether, so that's a debit for his cash register, and he has a credit for the income. And as you see here, the debits equal the credits, so the books are balanced. Um, the thing here is that there is not really any connection between these two sets of books. Each firm has their books, and, and it's all, uh, uh, it's, you know, the, the connection is that they did the transaction, but the books are, are themselves separate. So if Bob wants to cheat a little bit, he can say that, oh, maybe this transaction was only uh, eight ether, and he doesn't have to pay as much taxes, or whatever. Okay, so let's, Move on to triple entry accounting. This is an even more recent uh, accounting idea. And it was proposed by Ian Grigg, I believe in the 80s or maybe early 90s. And the idea about uh, triple entry accounting is that instead of each firm having their own books, you have the contract mediated by a, an Ethereum, or sorry, the transaction goes through a, an Ethereum contract, a smart contract, and this contract includes everything about the uh, transaction. So what the, what the product is, what the price is, who's the seller, who's the buyer. It's digitally signed. It can have uh, an IPFS hash that links to further documentation. So here we see a, an uh, XBRL document which Jeff is going to talk a little bit more about later. And we see instead of having the double entries in their books, they now just have a link to this, uh, the address of this Ethereum contract. And you see they both have the same link. And so their books are now linked together via this, this third entry, the triple entry. So, so this is the main idea to connect the firms uh, accounting books via a uh, smart contract. And uh, yeah, a little bit more about XBRL. Uh, I did some digging recently and found that there is, in fact, a conochial universal standard for uh, accounting practices. Um, so you can imagine not having to reinvent every Excel spreadsheet for or reinterpret one for every organization that you're looking at. So what is it? It's uh, the Extensible Business Reporting Standard, or language. Um, 
which is based on XML, um, close cousin to HTML, which makes it uh, machine readable. So the obvious uh, uh, benefits would be that you don't have to create your own schema. You can just uh, leverage right off of uh, the specs that are provided to you. There's lots of companies out there that um, have some translation tools to help you with that. And uh, auditors um, can get uh, data and ingest it uh, easily, um, uh, which is obviously a big win. And as you can see, um, the SEC even requires this um, uh, outright for large institutions uh, to provide um, transparency where they can. And uh, with 15 second block times for Ethereum, uh, you now have sort of an end-to-end -end data machine readable uh, distributed storage and um, cryptographic sign-off uh, all in one with 15 second block times. So something actually that just popped up on my newsfeed just uh, this morning actually um, is that the SEC um, uh, commissioner, Kara Stein, is now taking a look at this, or not specifically our balance uh, application, but the blockchain in general. And uh, given the relationship uh, to XBRL and, S and the SEC, uh, I would uh, kindly request maybe that we could uh, talk some more. Um, but uh, moving towards uh, the technical impl uh, uh, impl implementation, uh, you can think of this as a business process assembly line. So for every little change that you make, whether it's um, uh, a spreadsheet or it's like within the interface, that um, it's standards compliance, that you're committing it to uh, a distributed uh, system, uh, so, the, so the unsiloing of data, uh, which sort of maybe equates to a one world financial um, auditing repository. And uh, as Christian was demoing, the uh, security and sign off of uh, uh, different counterparty signatures. So, uh, yes, this is a demo time. And if anyone's interested, the developers, um, I'm uh, building a new uh, React framework based on Reflux called Acid Reflux, um, which aims to simplify um, the uh, store and action and view layers more um, into almost a two-step or a single process. So on to the demo. I wish this was a little bit bigger, but anyways. So yeah, um, <laughs> we have Kobe, Shaq, and LeBron as personas uh, in this system. Uh, there's supposed to be some kind of funny story, um, but uh, we'll just go with, I guess, Kobe being a, a freelance consultant on the side doing um, coding. So. I'm choosing between the different personas. Oh, and LeBron's in there, too. Yeah, he's hanging out. So we would choose Kobe. Uh, and we are just skipping right to the sent invoices that Kobe has um, for the sake of the demo. So you see the contract ID. You see the creation date, deadline, receiver signature, sender uh, signature date, uh, payment date, and then the addresses for both of the personas, uh, at which point we can create an invoice. Uh, and this is pretty standard fare um, accounting software kind of stuff. Um, you've probably seen this done over and over and over again. It's almost the hello world uh, of accounting, I guess you could think of. Um, we hopefully in the future would opt to allow for different currency choices, um, whether that's a token or it's a peg or uh, whatever the case may be. Fill in a little bit of text um, for you know, general invoicing. And we will select Shack from the dropdown. Uh, some more product specific description. Uh, Kobe's a software engineer, so he's billing him for software engineering. A lot of it. <laughs> um, and a little bit of text. So he'll submit it. And you will see some pop ups come up. So it's been created and signed. Um, signed being that you know, Kobe is the one submitting it, so he says, I you know, attest that this is cool, and uh, it's uh, what I want to see. Um, in other cases, you might um, have an, uh, a process before that. But here we have the invoice ID, uh, or the, co the contract ID, um, and you know, bare bones information about the due dates and such, and the price and the quantity. And you can see that uh, he's uh, shipped it to Shaq, uh, quantity, price, and that he is awaiting sign off and payment, because he's already given his okay. So we'll head over to Shaq now. 
and you will see uh, received invoices list, and you will see the unsigned and unpaid uh, invoice that's sitting there waiting for him. I'll click into that. And there we go. We have the same exact invoice from Kobe um, with that contract ID. And we can go ahead and sign and say that it's all right. So we get a pop up uh, saying that this contract has been signed from Shaq's end. And then we can just pay automatically. No more T3. Uh, this is pure T0. And it will say that he has paid uh, this exorbitant fee. And uh, that is pretty much end to end, really simple uh, proof of concept for invoicing. Uh, and there's a screen coming up that I will let uh, Christian. Uh, show off? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so th the idea here is that each, each of the firms have this invoicing in between them, and the invoice acts as not just an invoice, but the uh, payment mechanism as well as the digital receipt once the invoice has been made. And so you can imagine a, an uh, auditing firm looking at various businesses and, uh, and checking on the blockchain what kind of transactions have gone on between them. And you could take that and use data visualization tools to have a, a view of that particular uh, uh, segment of the economy and maybe infer that you know, uh, everything looks good, you know, maybe uh, a uh, Maybe a financial regulator could look at that and see various uh, systemic risks in, in, the, in the economy that certain businesses have a lot of uh, liabilities to each other, etc. So the, uh, this technology can bring a lot of uh, benefits for, for uh, transparency, for regulators and, and for businesses themselves, which you know has this uh, basically in um, you know this this data store that that cannot be altered. So. Oh, uh, and uh, also to mention, uh, under the hood, it uses uh, eSign, uh, the smart contract and document management system. Um, so this really is um, sort of uh, a conglomerate of uh, abstracted uh, technologies, um, like all together, um, hoping to build uh, something that is accessible anywhere and by anyone. Uh, and uh, I think that about covers it. Thank you. Thank you. As far as I understand, all this information is uh, on IPFS unencrypted linked into the blockchain through hashes. Uh, is that true? So, with, or do you have any uh, privacy uh, facilities whereby, for example, my competitor wouldn't see my entire supply chain? So, r right now, since this is a proof of concept, everything is fully transparent, but you could imagine. Uh, taking some of the information, putting it uh, encrypted on IPFS, for instance. You could also imagine combining it with, with Heiko's Hydra chains so that some of the information could be on, on private chains and uh, you could kind of uh, take, you know, digest or hashes of the information and, and map it onto the public chain. So, so there, there are, uh, privacy is, of course, one, uh, a big aspect, and one use case that it's, is immediate is for companies that want uh, complete transparency, like non-profits, etc. And uh, so that could be one where, where they want this transparency, but you're right, uh, more, more privacy protections need to be built in for the general use case. Great. Thank you guys. Thank you.